So hi, everybody, and welcome to the weekly meeting. Um, I have a few things that I want to take care of or just at least mention today. I put the minutes in the chat. Um, maybe the first thing we can do, because Kevin's on, and John, I know you're, you got to go in 15 minutes. Kevin, is there a communication meeting? On Friday on the calendar. Friday? Is it is it for this coming Friday? For some reason, I thought it was last Friday. I have it listed on my calendar this Friday, but yay! <laughs> Kevin, Kevin would be the ultimate confirmatory evidence. Is that true, Kevin? I will let Kevin chime in, but I also have one this Friday for me, and it the timing is um, ten ten a.m. Central. Yes, actually, I do have that on my thing. So that's eight eight PST. Yep. Yeah, I do have that. Okay. Okay. So I I just showed up a week early. That was my problem. <laughs> that is that is highly punctual. You were in. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, all right. So I sent out that list um, for the minutes for today, and I have just a few things that I want to talk about. Um. So the first is that, that I actually put the minutes in here ahead of time so I don't have to type them while I'm doing the meeting, which is good. So the first thing is um, I'm slowly rolling out the new template across working groups. So as I appear in your working groups, like I think we just did the ones with risk, Sean, mm -hmm. for some of them anyway, I'll have evolution. You know what I mean? Like every, every, yeah. every week I'll slowly roll them out so that we don't have to put that in away. Chipping away. Yeah, chipping away, exactly. So we don't have to do them all at once. Um, like I've said in the working groups, it's been remarkably easy, which is good. I was a little concerned that a new template would be challenging, but it hasn't been. So that is a good thing. Um, this is the next item on here under metrics deployment. If you click on um, that link, it'll take you to the tracking spreadsheet for the metrics. And so I encourage everybody in a working group or everybody who is attending a working group meeting. Hi, Daniel. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, that should be what you need. So if you're attending a working group meeting, can you point folks to this spreadsheet? This, we did this for the first metrics release and it proved to be super helpful just in terms of organizing thoughts. So tabs across the bottom for the different working groups. All good on that. This meeting is like my <laughs> housekeeping meeting. So um, the next item, any questions on that? All right, so the next item that I had is one of my big things is I'm always thinking about how we can take the metrics work that's being done and consider, consider it in, um, in deployment or consider these metrics in deployment. So I don't want just the metrics to live alone necessarily. You know, like, like we just come up with a metric, whatever that metric might be, and then it just sits on the website. So I'm always thinking about ways that we can get these metrics deployed and make them meaningful for projects or managers or whatever in the world. So the next item here is we've identified two projects that are very open to the idea that we would put together reports for them. And so one is uh, Jenkins X and the other is the Zephyr project. And we have two just really nice people who are willing to serve as points of contact to help us through kind of the development and presentation of the chaos metrics as part of that release for their communities. So if you click on either of those two links under here, I am creating really bad <laughs> template <laughs> reports for Jenkins X and for uh, Zephyr, all right? And the reason that I'm creating these really bad template reports is because then I'm gonna show them to folks at the Linux Foundation 
and hopefully they will think they're so ugly they will offer to make me prettier ones. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really just trying to get the idea out in front, in front of, of people. people. What's that? Oh, hi, Gary. Hi there. So here, I'll send the, the minutes. I don't seem to have access to the Zephyr one. Oh, OK. Let me. It looks exactly like Jenkins, but with a, with a Zephyr. Let me modify that. Anyone with the link can edit? How about now? Have we, I know we, we talked about this some months ago. Was there ever anything done on, in terms of creating a, a kind of a form driven front end for some of the DNI data collection? Cause that, that stuff still looks super manual. Yep. So actually that's my next item on here. So another way to kind of do the DNI stuff. I have some thoughts on this as well. So, um, so really what I'm trying to do with these, these templates um, is just kind of establish who the communities are, who we're working with. You can see the four different areas. I didn't, these aren't all of the metrics that were released as part of version one, but these are the ones I think might be easy enough to get. Um, so does anybody have any comments on this? I mean, it's really rough at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, this might be a dumb question. It's probably because I missed uh, pre the previous meeting. So what's, is is this meant to be like a grade card for different communities or is this meant to highlight which community are using chaos-based metrics? It's definitely not meant to be a grade card. Okay. We, we don't want to grade people. <laughs> right. It'd be okay to just talk to, you know, Kate or Kara at Jenkins X and Kate, obviously at Zephyr saying, hey, here are the chaos metrics. Right. We've taken some time to apply them to the Zephyr community or to the Jenkins X community. And now let's talk about what they mean to your community. Are all of these metrics meaningful to you? So it's meant to provide a little insight for the chaos project as well as to how okay. these metrics are understood in practice. Right. These are meant to be honestly just one page PDFs. Mm -hmm. Just provide really high level views of these metrics. Yeah, because I was thinking if if you know we wanted to have sort of a case study of communities that are using chaos based metrics. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously like we're we're one of them, right? I mean, we work with you know, folks at Baturgi and then, you know, so obviously we're using a lot of chaos-based metrics. Because um, it would be interesting to see, like, if there are other, I mean, folks at Baturgi and maybe Sean, like, at, at Augur, like, you can help, like, if we can get, a, like, a list of communities that are uh, using chaos-based metrics, I think that might be, like, an interesting exercise to do as well. But... Let me know if you think that's a bad idea. But. Oh, I think it's a great idea. And in fact, <laughs> these reports can, I hate to use the metaphor, but kind of serve as the skinny end of the wedge mm -hmm. for those case studies. You know that we're providing insight on these chaos metrics. Right. And we can understand how they actually affect decision making, change the way that people understand their community. I think this is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, so, so just a minute comment. So the way we are working with some customers is uh, through uh, looking for a specific use cases of interest to them. And uh, in some cases, those use cases might be related to some of the chaos metrics that we already have defined. But in some others, it's more uh, discovered process, let's say. So what I'm trying to do, at least personally, is to bring those ideas into chaos and somehow at least at the level of panels, so which is something, but then we need to move them uh, uh, to the more theoretical point of view. Similar thing that I, I'm doing with um, inner source, for instance, with uh, really different metrics. Yeah. 
So my main concern is that uh, people have an opinion and when you are kind of saying, these are the metrics we are using in chaos, then they can say, uh, oh, well, uh, we are defining committers in a different way or our way of defining active contributors is different from this or this way. So uh, mm -hmm. having kind of a common set of metrics defined across different communities is something challenging, definitely. Sure. Just, uh, some thoughts here. Yeah, no, that's, that's completely fair and point well taken. And maybe that, I think that would be in, insightful, <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think it's meant to be like, you know, we're using all of like metrics that are that are defined in, in chaos. I mean, there are some like, I mean, Daniel, you pointed out, I mean, there are some like, you know, when we work with you guys, there are some stuff mm -hmm. that we haven't upstreamed to chaos yet, right? Like that mm -hmm. cumulative backlog is like one of them that, you know, I'm like, that's a discussion I've been having with Alberto, but mm -hmm. um but I mean, I, I feel comfortable saying like we benefit from the work that chaos community is doing, not all of it, it's been defined, like we use something that might not be defined in mm -hmm. chaos, but I think that's completely fine, right? I mean, that might be the case with some of the other communities that you work with, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the technology they yeah. are using at the very end, the dashboard is chaos. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's something we can, we can ask. Right. Part of what I'm trying to do also with these, um, reports and Daniel, this may or may not be useful. Is I think there are a lot of communities out there that just don't have any insight as mm -hmm. to what they're doing, mm -hmm. and so this wouldn't necessarily be uh, a supplement to what Augur and Grimoire Lab can provide by mm -hmm. any means. But what this it wouldn't is replace it wouldn't replace it. It's um it is a no. supplement. It's, it's just a, really meant to open the discussion around what metrics can mean for a community. That, that's really it. And I think it's a fairly low overhead on our part to provide that insight. And I think if they honestly, then if they want to get much deeper, then they can talk about, and I appreciate the approach you talked about Daniel with use cases and building the different panels that address those use cases. Mm -hmm. But I think that might be a, conversation that would occur after something like this <laughs> but this is meant just to, to get a get a visual see you later john to get a visual of how we understand say reviews or issues quite simply um perhaps another way to proceed from our side would be uh to say we are now working code reviews for instance uh, in, yep. uh so we define some way of this so then we share this with customers and then check if that makes sense so it, first if that makes sense from uh, a kind of a high level point of view when talking about code review processes in GitLab, GitHub, Gary, whatever people are using so from let's say the the expertise in Grimoire Lab then once this is ready to go then we ask others using chaos technology about what they think about this. I don't know. Is this something say useful? That, you say that, say that again. I didn't totally follow the, the line. <laughs> so my understanding from what you said is that it would be useful to have to, for instance, spread the word about what code review is for chaos and then try to have some common understanding across all of the people using chaos technology. Yeah, that could be a, a very useful Okay, so that was my understanding of what you said. Yeah, no, that's that, that, that would be extreme. I mean, if we can standardize the way that people talk about things, or at uh -huh. least improve standardization on the way people talk about things, I think that would be a huge benefit, okay. personally. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also, so yes, I agree with that. And then I think it's also the, these small reports would really just be a way to quite simply, health metrics for projects that don't otherwise do this. I mean, the what Augur and Grimoire Lab cover in terms of the landscape of open source projects is not everything. That's true. So it's if, if there's any way that we could, what's that? It's a big no, it's not a, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a, yeah it's, a, it's an end goal perhaps, but if there's any way that we can try to improve any transparency on community health, 
through mm. fairly what I would consider to be low overhead reports like this, I think that's a win for chaos. Mm. And then if organizations want to dig a lot deeper, the chaos project really can't do a whole lot in that regard. I can't, we don't have the capacity to do that. Mm. There are groups. Well, well, you know what, have, have, you, have you seen the uh, project journey by CNCF people for Envoy project? It's really cool. It? It's kind of the project journey for some CNCF projects and they have for Envoy. It's six pages mm -hmm. document. Uh, sounds like easy to have. It's more, you, we need to have some more in depth analysis of what the project about. But uh, I can look for the, um, hey, don't worry. Project CNCF. So if I found this, yeah, it's a journey report. Can you paste it in there? Yeah. Give me a second. There should be a PDF. Okay, I found this. So uh, I'm adding this in the chat. Um, okay. So there is a PDF that you can click on the top right. Um, this is six pages thing. So it's like, I don't know, five, the metrics they are having in the yeah, PDF they have. That's right, yep. So something like this, perhaps not even six pages, but half page. Yeah, with... <laughs> yeah hopefully. It'd be great if it wasn't six pages. But yes, some, yes, this is great. Thank you for, and I, I had also thought, part of my thinking was the, like the Uber PDF that Petersia had done. Oh yeah, the flyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something yeah, like this. Yeah, just like that. That's all I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. All that this is. So, so yeah. then sorry for the noise. I was thinking about the other thing before. Yeah. Um, did somebody drop that in there? It's the PDF, okay. Uh, okay, so we were talking about community reports and about working with Jenkins X and Zephyr to put together some community reports purely based on the chaos metrics as part of the release. Okay. Any other comments on that? Thank you. That's that was that was good. I wanted to know what the next steps are. Maybe you said that in the beginning before I joined. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't talk about that. Um, I don't know. I had thought, I don't know. Do you have thoughts? I have some thoughts, but maybe you have thoughts. Well, one thought is that we define what are the steps for achieving our goal. And then we have action items. And every week we talk about progressing on those action items. And we have volunteers to do those action items. Well, that sounds great. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> I approve. So, um... and since we already spent twenty minutes on this, maybe we define the action items next week. Okay, that's fine. Okay, the next thing was I. This is cross referenced from the DNI badging or the DNI meeting on Monday. So the next thing is about, a couple of us were in that meeting, is a way to take the work that's being done in the DNI working group and be able to express it in meaningful ways. Again, same issue, so that the metrics don't live in isolation on the web page, that they're actually deployed, um, again, in meaningful ways that help people. And so, it brought together or brought forward a DNI badging proposal and we talked through it a little bit. So these are the notes again, cross referenced from the DNI meeting. Don, thanks for taking these minutes or notes. And really the premise is, is that a, an, an event could submit a request for a DNI badge. Um, the, the process by which a badge would be badge would be awarded would occur in an open and peer reviewed process, um, and um, based on hitting certain milestones, um, 
a badge would be awarded or not awarded. And that's fundamentally what it what it is. And so um, there was a general, I think, positive consensus around this type of model. And there was also a suggestion that this may focus the DNI working group on kind of spelling out a few additional event related DNI metrics so that the badges were a little bit more robust than the, I think maybe the three set of metrics we have right now around events. So Daniel and Don, did I capture that right? Did I miss things? So um, at the moment, we are looking, I'm gonna put together a working kind of workflow prototype of what this might look like. Um, so just the kind of the workflow of somebody submitting a request to have an event badged and um, how the review process would look and then how, how badges would actually be issued kind of thing. Um, and I think if we have the workflow set out, it'll give us something to talk about just in terms of what this might look like and feedback that people have. Um, there were a few expressed concerns with this just in terms of deployment. Um, I know my, my, one of mine was trying to find people to actually assist in the process of awarding badges. Mm -hmm. um, issues about recertification, just how that gets done. Um, were there any other concerns that I have in here? So people have thoughts on this? Again, it seems like my efforts are always about trying to bring these metrics to, to have meaningful impact. Stunned silence, positive well, silence. <laughs> so like, on, I mean, I think this is an interesting idea. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying interesting in a good way, not in a bad way. So just, just <laughs> for context. But uh, uh, my concern is, let's say we do this for like events, right? I mean, just pick an event they do like multiple times a year. It could be like OpenStack Summit or CNCF. Right. Um, so, I mean, would this be like, wouldn't like, like a goals change like from like one event to the next like i mean i'm making this up they want to have 20 percent of attendees from from underrepresented communities for example like they'll be goal for like one year maybe the next one they may want to up it to like 25 so would wouldn't that like a standard be somewhat subjective depending on the community and events or i mean i'm making this up like event a they might want to their numbers have been so bad, they want to start with like 10%, but another one that's been around for a while, they want to start with like a 20% as a goal. I mean, I'm not saying that's sort of the right way to look at it, but so like, how would we like, a, you know, give out a badge if, if the goals are different for different events and different communities? Like, I don't know if that was already discussed or. That wasn't discussed. I have thoughts, yeah. but if other people want yeah. to chime in. Yeah. So my initial reaction is that yeah. we, the badge wouldn't be assigned to a percentage mm -hmm. of that. So the badge would be assigned to, um, do you have an event? It's really just the metrics. So do you have an event code of conduct? Are you mm -hmm. issuing diversity <clears throat> access tickets in a, okay. in a meaningful way? Are you right. um, providing a family friendly environment in a way that's, that's it's beneficial to your project. Um, and then I think the two that we had talked about, Don or Daniel, you could, I think it was speaker demographics and attendee demographics. And it was that the speaker demographics and attendee demographics are simply being reported. Okay, so you, you don't course. have like a goal, but whether it's be, being tracked or not. Okay. Correct. That you're being transparent yeah. about these things and they're available yeah. to people in the community. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And, okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, all right. So that was that was a nice conversation. Anybody else have comments on this? 
And then I, okay, so then the next thing I kept thinking, I just kept on thinking and I was started thinking about software. And so one of the things that we are doing in the software, or at least I've talked about <clears throat> is say on the, the dashboards that are being shown in Grimoire Lab or the, the interface that Augur is using that like on a metric by metric basis, we would report, you know, this is a chaos metric. This has been discussed. This certainly, there's no mandate to do anything like this, but this is what, what was discussed. My, one of my thoughts was, is maybe that gets a little bit hard to manage. So that, you know, as a new metric comes out or a new metric is being deployed by Grimoire Lab and we're trying to get it into chaos and just the whole, all this directionality gets to be kind of weird and hard to manage that maybe, you see this text that I put down below? we could just propose something and I wrote this in like a minute that we could propose something like this on the Grimoire Lab and Augur that just says something to the effect of Grimoire or I'm sorry, metrics available in the software are in part developed in conjunction with the chaos project. Cause like Ray, as you mentioned, certain metrics <clears throat> that you're using aren't necessarily upstream to the chaos project. So, you know, it, there's always this kind of this gray area as to where metrics are, whether or not they're in the chaos project or not. Um, and, and then for more information, go see the list of metrics. What do people think of this? Might be a simpler way to just create the connection between metrics and software, as opposed to tracking them one by one. Again, just trying to get the metrics to have, these are the trace metrics, right? So we have, we've talked about the DNI metrics that are harder to track, trying to do a badging program for that. Um, talking about the, the reports that we can help communities kind of express these metrics. And I'm just talking about the software as a way to, to just create a connection with the chaos metrics. I don't know what, but, John or Dan, Daniel, I guess. This point, I mean, we already we provide that in our API, and I think it's a good idea. But maybe just like mm -hmm. one statement in the entire R piece of software. Hmm. I think it, it makes sense. The point is basically to look for the place for to have this information. Yeah, whatever is the most meaningful place to have the information, mm -hmm. and then we don't have to track one by one. <laughs> it's just we. We do have a statement that says these two things are connected and it's not perfectly connected because I know that Grimoire Lab and Augur have more than what's defined metrics wise. Yeah. And there are certain metrics that aren't necessarily deployed in um, Grimoire Lab and Augur, which is mm -hmm. totally fine as well. But this would just be like, hey, we're, we're I, that's the in part part. We're sort of connected. <laughs> I'm hedging a little bit on that statement. So um but i think yeah. it's a good step in the right direction it gets us a little bit more connected um just like we have in the metrics saying hey you can find it in augur and grimoire lab just the reverse here yeah um, i i i'm i'm still fond of the idea of making a one-to-one -one connection but i understand that challenge in doing it and yeah, that was mostly rather, it. rather than lifting the entire universe here we can just go with this part and then maybe at a later point it's more beneficial to do the one-on-one -on -one linking and then we can still do it later okay this might be the the lower bar approach first yeah okay it somehow reminded me of like old olden time web page linking or like you would link to my web page and <laughs> you link to my web page and I don't know if anybody remembers that like when reciprocal linking on the web was kind of a thing. <laughs> that was search engine optimization at its time. <laughs> kind of reminded me of that. <laughs> so, um, but we but but in the chaos project we actually own both of the web pages or own I guess you know all of these web pages are under kind of the same <laughs> the same project so might be a little bit easier. Um, all right. So maybe from a um, from a Augur and Grimoire Lab perspective, could maybe you think about 
where to put something like that, like a statement. Daniel, Sean, maybe you already have it. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm not quite sure how it will be different than what we're already doing. What are what? So where is it right now? I, I mean, it's embedded in our all our API docs. So you're just thinking like, put it one place inside the app. Oh no, maybe. I mean, maybe you're already doing it to the degree that's needed. I mean, it's. I guess we're doing it more granularly than you're imagining it, which is totally fine. Um, I think what I will do is to open a GitHub issue. Okay. Um, and see what happens, because I'm not okay. really sure where to add this information. Well, I have some ideas, but. I don't know. Okay. Okay, um, that's good on that. Thank you. Who is going to open the issue? Oh, can you say again? Who is going to open the issue? Yeah, I said the guy. Uh, okay. I just want to capture it in the minutes. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Sean. Um, so then, uh, oh, I already mentioned the tracking for the work groups. Um, are there any work group updates that people want to, those are my issues. So does any, if anybody has any other comments kind of stuff. Um, I don't work group updates. Are there anything like we kind of had the DNI update because that was around the badging stuff. Sean, anything with risk or. Nothing. I mean, we met yesterday with, with risk and we talked mostly about adding test coverage and safety critical system metrics. There's a few new standards that are observed that are referenced in the notes from that meeting that we're looking into. And we updated the set of uh, set of metrics we're looking to put out for the next release. Okay. Um, the DNI, I think is C above. Um, Don, anything with common? Yes, um, I think the one thing with common here, I'll throw, I'll throw some notes in. Um, one of the things that we talked about is um, basically changing the focus areas a little bit with common because we, um, they were a bit haphazard based on the metrics that we had started to define. And we talked about restructuring them into sort of a who, what, when, and where. So the who being, you know, kind of people, um, information about people, um, the what being information about the contributions and activity, the when, of course, being time-based, and the where being sort of the tools and platforms where the activity occurred, which seems like a more logical way of doing it. Anybody have any, any thoughts on that, pro or con? Mine's a big pro. I was at that meeting too, and I thought it was it's super smart. Um, and so I, anyway, I really like the idea. Yeah, I did too. Me? I think it was was it Manrique or Daniel's idea? I think. It was Manrique. Manrique. Hmm. And then we talked about kind of just a few other metrics, but nothing too substantial. Does this make sense for folks? The who, what, when, where. Yeah, that's a, a lot of intuitive. I think it provides a lot of nice clarity because then I, did we talk about this too? The potential then for these to be filters. Hmm. You know, so you would have if you're thinking about issues or reviews, you can ask questions of who, what, when, and where <laughs> on these particular things, um, which actually to me then slots common in a lot more easily. Which is what it, I think was the premise of common original. So it makes a ton of sense to me. All right, cool. Um, evolution meeting this week. But Carter's. Yeah, Carter's on the other call for the GCI. Okay. So um, they're, we're meeting this week and I don't know. Okay. How, we're just going to continue going through the metrics that are being developed for this release. Okay. 
submitting value kind of the same meeting this week. Um, is that everybody? With, with the GCI, do you mean the Google code then? Yeah. yeah. Is this for chaos? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I didn't see anything in the minutes, so. That was in the, it was a separate email thread on the list. Okay. I, I just got back from vacation. I just landed, so I still have a few hundred emails to go. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll I'll give you an update on that. Um, any Augur? I had some Augur risk thing. I just wanted to. I know Augur right now on part of their risk when they do license declarations. John, I'm speaking on your behalf, but when you do licenses, the we talked with Kate yesterday about linking out to the SPDX definitions of the licenses along with the TLDR descriptions as, mm -hmm. uh, as available. Mm -hmm. I learned that TLDR doesn't have a lot of license coverage. Yeah. So well, that was the key there. Yeah. It, um, so we're going to use uh, right now. I haven't talked to Matt Snell yet. So, and he's not here. He's uh, got, you guys have some break right now. So yeah. I'll check with him on Tuesday about, or Wednesday. Okay. Any other updates on Augur? Um, in the last week? We've had the, we've been doing a lot of work just sort of finishing up some of the front end feedback that we got from a few of the Augur meetings and also okay. installing, uh, getting our Docker container fish finished up and getting sample data installed by default, just real basic things to make Augur easier and easier to get set up. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, Lamore Lab, do you want to bring anything forward in the last week? Hmm. Uh, uh, not really. I, I've been at the All Things Open and reading emails, so I have no idea. <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> I can help today. I will just put no report. Uh, <laughs> totally fine. Uh, okay. So then to the GCI thing. Um, yeah, and then we want to get to the CASCON, but to the GCI, we, the, right now there is a meeting going on. So Georg, we're going to be submitting GCI under the Linux foundation. So remember the old way that I, I don't know if we did this anyway, I did this with SPDX where the Linux foundation submits and then the different projects have smaller tasks inside of there. And so right now there's a group of people that are kind of meeting to define what those tasks are. Um, just for those of you that don't know, GCI is the, it's an event that occurs over, I think, the springtime or, you know, winter into springtime. Um, and the age range, I think, is really young. I think um, so up to 17 years old, but as young as seven years old, eight years old, it's um, quite young. So for people, um, to give people an opportunity to participate in open source projects with really low, a low bar. So try to in, encourage that engagement. Um, so I think at the moment, Sean, there, there is something, there is, if you click on that link, if you do have Augur tasks. And we have, know? we have them and um, Carter's representing that. At, uh, okay. Meeting, but yeah, there's a link somewhere. Okay. Yeah, there is. It's just in that, in the meeting minutes right here. And so just as I'll get them posted to the wiki page, I just need them in a format, but Venu should be taking care of the formatting of the tasks. Excellent. So, yep. So they just need to be, they need to have a few things defined, like what category it falls into, but Carter should be getting up to speed on that. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a beginner task and what the deliverables are, mm -hmm. you know, what we're actually going to uh, grade them on or, you know, evaluate them on. So that's all. Excellent. Okay. Um, so that's the end of things for me. A variety of things today. Um, Chaos Con. Uh, I, I can stop talking for a while. I can give a quick CFP update. So far, okay. we we've had one good submission and um, three submissions that are not a fit at all for. For ChaosCon, they just they just look like random people who are trying to get talks at conferences. Um, so one of the things that I did was I updated the text on the ChaosCon um, EU page about the CFP so that it is a little bit more clear that this is a metrics 
related conference um, and not just, you know, anything. So maybe that'll help cut down on the, on the junk submissions. I don't know. But that's a, that's a CFP. So we've got really okay. one, one good submission. So we need to, we need to do some more promotion of it for sure. Okay. Um, I had mentioned the Linux Foundation did tweet it out mm -hmm. maybe about a week ago. So if y'all feel like retweeting that thing, please do. Um, and then I'll reach out to them again whenever you think, whenever the folks, whenever anybody else thinks is appropriate. I'm, it seems like they're happy to, to try to encourage um, participation in their events. Um, and then we should be good on sponsorship. So um, still, I don't know, Ray, you want to say anything or? Uh, no, I think uh, we should be good to go with, from, from our end. Okay. Yep. Um, so we've had to do a little bit of, we had to figure out how to do invoicing through Community Bridge, <laughs> which couldn't be done <laughs> apparently. Because that would, that would uh, no, no snarky comment. So we had to figure out how to do <laughs> invoicing from Community Bridge and um, we should be good to go there. But then it, I think we should be able to cover the launch for ChaosCon. I think that was one of our hopes with the the second sponsorship. So still coming, but that. Oh, and the other thing was, uh, Matt, you confirmed uh, Deb Nicholson as our keynote. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure if everybody knows that or not, um, but I think she'll be fantastic. Yeah, that'll be great. I'm really excited about that. And I, I would like to, so um, there was a request to help offset one night of hotel from Deb as a keynote speaker. And I would like to put it out there as was pointed out, I was talking to, to Don, um, that you know, the Software Freedom Conservancy is a nonprofit. So they are not a, a large for-profit organization. And so it's just something to think about. Maybe we can discuss this now, we could discuss it later, but I can stop recording. People can say what they want, but um, personally, I, I feel that I have zero problem using community bridge funds to help offset one hotel night for Deb. She's going to be there at FOSDEM anyway, so she's covering all other travel costs. But um, And we can bring this forward if people want to have comments, and then we can bring this forward. To yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that as well. So, okay. so. I'm also in favor. Okay. I think for invited speakers, that is uh, completely appropriate. Yeah, so the, the, the comment was if they're invited from a super huge company that has lots of money, maybe, <laughs> maybe a little less appropriate <laughs> um, versus maybe a, maybe not that profile of company. So that's all. Um, so I'll circle back with Georg and you, Ray, just because yep. you technically um, kind of sign off on community bridge stuff. Right. Um, any other comments on that? Yeah, I'm really excited too. She had asked for ideas as well. And I think one of the things that I had mentioned was possibly the, the pitfalls of metrics. I think this is what had come up and how they might be used in ways that we don't suspect they would be used and just things we need to keep our eyes out so i'm super cool and anything else on chaos con um we had so so I, i'm not caught up on emails one of the things that we were talking about before i went on vacation was um that Biturgia had confirmed the location and paid for it and it now needs yeah. to be reimbursed it seems like this is getting straightened out. Good. So I think I've been kind of following the thread with Alicia. Is that right? Yep. And um, and the Linux Foundation as to how 
she can get reimbursed. And I, anyway, I think it, I, it sounded like the last email, it is getting worked out. Again, it's just a logistical thing for people on this call. Like moving dollars is not the easiest thing all the time. Okay. As you all know. I'm looking at the planning committee document that we have. Uh -huh. And one of the action items was to set up a registration form. I had sent out an email to the committee. Thank you very much for the feedback. I will work on that over the next okay. few days um, to fix the comments and then also set up the form for the diversity access tickets. Okay. That sounds good. And we should, um, uh, do we have that mentioned in the CFP page, Kevin? I'm actually, so I've got an edit uh, that, I'm, that I'm working on currently. Uh, Don and Georg have both reviewed it. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm waiting now until the forms are done. And when the forms are done, I'll uh, I'll add the registration links in, and we'll uh, okay. everything will go live. Okay. So it seems like Gary was pointing to himself. He's he's clogging things up again. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'll I'll get on it. By the way, welcome back from your vacation. Thank you. <laughs> All uh, right. Good. Then I have an action item here for Don to send out the Doodle to special CFP selection meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's still on my to-do list. <laughs> I'll do, I'll try to do that this, this weekend or, or next week while I'm in Leon. Yeah. Um, Daniel, I have an action item for you to ask about coffee and tea and possibly bringing snacks. Yeah. Um... I read this like 10 minutes ago and then I sent an email to Alicia to go and do this. So, yeah. So you're doing it. It's moving forward. It's in progress. <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> Thank you for the update. Um, and I had an action item to ask Kate for who is doing the marketing. I, again, haven't read my emails, but if they tweeted about it, then I assume it's done. Yeah, I have the name of the person. I don't remember. Perfect. The guy's name, the guy, Mark or something like that. Excellent. Thank you. So we're progressing on the action items. Are there new action items that we should add to this point? Uh, maybe is that we all think about submitting to ChaosCon? How does uh, how does Daniel's action item for the coffee and tea change if we're if we're doing lunch at the site? Um, so the action item I was actually doing was to uh, go through coffee break, lunch in the place, um, but all together, so probably there's not a need for, for snacks, but um, we need to ask for everything, that's all. So I, I'm still waiting for, for an answer, so that's it. Are you, do you have something in mind, Kevin? Oh, no, I was, I was just curious because the, the lunch thing had, the lunch thing I believe has come up uh, after the discussion of uh, coffee and, and snacks. So I was just wondering if the uh, if your specific to do item had changed at all or needed to change. I think it still holds. Just like it'd be like morning coffee mm -hmm. and afternoon coffee, but then the mm -hmm. lunch would just be one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Excellent. Gary just posted something. I'm supposed to look at hats. Yeah, one of the things that I was looking at is um, how we can have chaos branded swag without having to have a inventory and managing it all. So there are several services that allow us to put up a chaos shop, basically. And they manage all of the manufacturing and shipping and all of it. Um, so one of them, I just post one in the chat, but there are others um, where the idea is that we upload our Chaos logo, we define some of some hoodies or t-shirts or hats or whatever we want. And th there, there's the option to request a price that is above manufacturing price or above their price. And that would 
create funds for chaos um, or we just ask the, the their price and then we don't get money from it but anyone who wants chaos swag can order it through this online shop and if we want something for a conference then we can also go through this store and order it as we need it so that's an idea that i just wanted to put in front of you all okay would this be for chaos con or is this just kind of in general for chaos? i think it's general is what i heard and i think we want to sell it at cost i don't think we need to make any money off of it we just want to promote ourselves right yeah i would agree with that i mean i think the question is would there be enough demand for it i mean that these i mean i don't know i mean i don't know all the vendors but some of them i dealt with they i mean there's decent amount of fee that we need to pay for and you know i i do understand like we don't want to we don't want anybody like carrying inventory in their garage but um outside of chaos con like you know between the events like would people be buying like chaos branded hoodies or or beanies or whatever you have in the shop and yeah. as an example like stickers like i mean it sounds outrageous like you know like we charge like a dollar for a sticker for example right the shipping would cost like five bucks to the somebody in the us right and it it, it can get kind of ridiculous but... yeah. i think that's fair yeah, I mean, just as an FYI, I mean, it, it's, you know, having had, had to deal with some of them, I mean, some are better than others in terms of like customer support, so. So, yeah. if you have experience with some of these, um, do you have a preference? Uh, I mean, I mean, at GitLab, we, we transition back to printfection like we worked with them for a while and we weren't happy with them we went with somebody else i forget the name of it and they were just horrendous and then we went back to like printfection but uh i'm not sure how expensive they are i don't know the cost of them like managing our i think they have a warehouse in colorado somewhere it's my understanding but... okay i'm still plan on <clears throat> bringing beanies with a tassel, right? Isn't that kind of what we decided? Like knit cap to fuzz them? Not plus fuzz. one. Chaos con. <laughs> Chaos, we're not hitting them out of fuzz them. Chaos con. Isn't that right? So I would bring whatever order. Whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, for the next meeting, I'll have a, a sample design for everybody. Okay. Um, thank you, Gary. Yeah, I think for now we have all of the activities covered in okay. advance of ChaosCon. So I close the discussion. Okay. Um, I am done. Anybody else have anything in the last minute or two? I just have a, a curiosity. How is the meeting with the Linux Foundation, the lady? I think it's Linda, or so I've forgotten her name. They what do you want to know? Just how is the progress going on? There was supposed to be some studies, I think, so with the uh, Linux Foundation. Are you I talking forgot. about the events and diversity and inclusion metrics for the Linux Foundation event? Yeah. So we are right now waiting for Angela to um, send us a list, a spreadsheet with the metrics that she thinks are most interesting for them. So we have given an introduction to the work that we've done and the metrics that we have. And um, Angela was heading out on a trip. And so when she gets back, she wanted to follow up with us. Okay, thank you. All right, um, next week, is everybody going to be in uh, Open Source Summit Europe? You're not going, uh -huh. Okay. 
Uh, I'm not. I'm not going either. So. Okay. Well, then we'll keep this meeting. I know if you are, then. Okay. Well, for those of for those of you that are going to be there, have a great time. Um, with the rest, have a. And for everybody, have a great week. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.